Hi, plan friends. Billy is teaching us how to make his famous pesto today on Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. <sighs> okay, plan friends. I'm so excited about today's episode, not only because Billy, my fiance, gets to be on it, but because <laughs> he makes the most mouth-watering, addicting pesto out there. He subs walnuts into it and I eat it with a spoon. I'm so obsessed with it and he talked about it in this week's episode of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast called Garden to Table. So, cooking right along in the spirit of Garden to Table, we just harvested some fresh basil from Fiala Farm and Billy is going to walk us through how to make his delicious, addictive, crunchy, sweet, salty, amazing, <laughs> Baseball. So welcome, Billy. Happy to be here. It's uh, it's actually a very, very simple recipe. As Maria plays with all the basil, uh, it's just two kinds of fat, uh, two kinds of salt, and we're pretty much off and running. Okay, so we've obviously got the freshly harvested basil from the garden. What else do we need to make Billy's famous walnut pesto? Well, first we're going to need to dry the basil because you don't want any water in there, and then we're going to use some walnuts. We're going to use some uh, some Parmesan cheese, a good olive oil, and just a little bit of salt because we're gonna get most of that saltiness from the Parmesan. And you know, sometimes you eat, don't even, I love Parmesan cheese, so when he makes it for me, he always puts the cheese in, but you don't have to use the cheese. It's still like delicious without it if you're lactose intolerant. And why do you use the walnuts instead of pine nuts? Because traditional pesto is made with pine nuts. Yeah, so pignoli nuts or pine nuts are the primary nut in pesto. I've never been a huge fan, personally. Uh, I think that they're a little on the creamy side and I like something that holds up uh, for a slightly chunkier pesto for bigger uh, pieces of meat and fish and vegetables. Uh, and obviously it goes fantastic with a breakfast sandwich as well. So I like using walnuts. They're a little bit darker in flavor. They have, you can toast them up beforehand to really bring out all the essential oils in of the walnuts and they just make for a much more satisfying and slightly richer pesto uh, than the pine nut. Just my personal taste. People make pesto out of all different kinds of nuts but walnuts are my personal favorite. And they look like little brains. <laughs> <laughs> So the other thing is we are at Fiala Farm right now using my mom's kitchen and garden so we only have a food processor but Billy actually when he wants to get really fancy and we're in our apartment, he uses a mortar and pestle a la Samin Nasrat salt fat acid heat and actually like goes in and is like... It's a good stress <laughs> <Just> relief. Like <laughs> chomping away at the walnuts. So if you want to be really fancy and do it the way the Italians do, definitely use a mortar and pestle. It's awesome. That's normally how he makes it, but today we're doing the easy way. And the only swap between the mortar and pestle, if you are going to use the mortar and pestle method, is that you want to put the walnuts in first. In the, with the food processor, we're going to put basil in first and weigh them down with the walnuts. But when you're using mortar and pestle first, you really want to get the right consistency um, with the pulverized walnuts before you add anything else. And you're going to want to go with a coarser sea salt to be able to chop up that basil. Okay, so I think we are going to go off camera, separate all of these basil leaves from the stems, and we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> While we were cleaning the leaves, Billy made a point, gave me some feedback that I had to take the stems off the basil leaf. Um, and then you made a point to dry the leaves out. So why did you do that? Yeah, so the stems, they hold a lot of water and you don't want any water in this pesto as much as you can avoid. So you want to try to just take your thumb and forefinger and just pinch as close to the leaf as you can. And they're easy to take off that way. And then again, after you rinse them thoroughly because they've been in the garden, you want to just lay down a couple of towels or some paper towels and roll them and press them so that you're getting all that extra water out because water's not an ingredient in pesto. You just want that olive oil. Water's not an ingredient in pesto. You heard it here first. <laughs> so, with the food processor, what's going in first? Yeah, so we want to take that basil first. Uh, obviously, this would be, again, reverse if we were using a mortar and pesto. But we want to take the basil and we want to lay it down. And you can do this in shifts based on the size of your food processor, but the idea is, is to get a good amount of basil in there, basically two to one basil to walnuts, 
and then you're gonna to wanna to weigh down the basil with the walnuts. Now, Maria likes a particularly nutty pesto, so I'm putting in a couple extra walnuts for her taste. But I like it kind of crunchy, which is not Italian of me, but I kind of like some like little granules of walnuts in there. She really does. And kind of tasty. That is a-okay. And then um, you want your food process to set on low. The idea here is that you just wanna pulse this until it starts to come together. Uh, you can always go further with pesto. You can always liquefy it more, blend it more, but you can never take it back. So do it in shifts and you know, kind of look at it and taste it as you go, and you'll get an idea of exactly where you want your texture to be. So what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for here is Already you can see how it's starting to come together. I don't want to go too far, so I'm only going to do about eight or nine more pulses from here. Okay. Do we have to put salt in there? Nope, you don't. Uh, not at this point. But I am seeing some of the basil come up to the top, so I'm just going to sprinkle a couple more walnuts on there because you never added too many walnuts with mm -hmm. that stuff. You can never add too many walnuts. So we're just going to drizzle a little bit in, just a thin stream, while we pulse. Alright, so now I'm just going to drizzle in the olive oil, and we're going to start to add the cheese. Now this is a smaller amount of cheese, um, because we don't want all the salt to come from the cheese, but we want most of the salt to come from the cheese, especially when she's eating it. So I'm just going to sprinkle it right into the top of the food processor. Sometimes Billy won't make it with cheese, and he'll like surprise everywhere. me. And I'll get mad. That's true. All right, and now as I'm just gonna drizzle this olive oil in, again, we're not trying to finish the pesto, so I'm not adding all of the olive oil that I'm going to add. I'm just kind of drizzling it in to help incorporate the cheese. Now it's coming together. It's coming together, and then every once in a while, you just wanna scrape down the sides of the food processor. Okay. All right, now this is where you wanna start doing taste tests. All right, so, Maria, we're gonna add more salt, so you don't have to worry about salt right now, but how are we doing? How's the texture? Where are we at? Hmm, it needs more olive oil? Mm -hmm. Yep, we're gonna add more olive oil too. But that tastes good. So right now it's like a paste consistency? It's, yes, it's very much a paste. So at this point I'm really happy with the texture, so I wanna add it to the bowl, and then we start to add the olive oil and the salt, and we're just gonna taste and go, taste and go. My favorite part. This is the best part. So you can see, even as it's coming out, it's coming out in chunks, right? It's not yet a paste. Um, and so. Yeah, it is. A, it's like a walnut basil paste mm -hmm. where the olive oil is just kind of keeping it to stick together. But it's definitely not. It would definitely be a spreadable paste right now. It's definitely not pesto quite yet. It's not a sauce yet. And we got a couple little leaves that decided to stick in the sides of the blender. So we'll just pull those out. It's not a big deal. Old school blender. Still works, did a nice Still job. Works. Got almost all the basil leaves, which is oh, pretty much yeah, good. all you can ask for. Mm, should we just <laughs> add the rest of that cheese in? <laughs> yes, of course. All right. Freshly grated, I'm the sous chef, so I grated the cheese and I put all the things in little bowls for Billy to make the <laughs> Very Food Network. If you want, you can drizzle this in, and I'll just tell you, uh, I'll tell you when we're at a good point, or you can just drizzle it until you think we're at a good point, and I'll just start mixing this until we get the right consistency. Okay. So as we're doing this, we're just um, waiting for the sauce to kind of come together, because the last thing we're gonna add is salt, and it's not really gonna change the texture at all. Um, but we you want- You can see it's getting shiny. Mm -hmm. Um, the paste is now getting shiny. You can see some oil starting That's to good. starting to like stick to the side of the bowl, yeah. and you can see that now as you stir it, like the sauce, it's it's becoming it's starting to become a sauce. It's like moving around the spoon, and it's not like this rigid paste that's like not really going anywhere. Yeah, so it's starting to gain, you know, a little bit less viscosity. Elasticity. Yeah, sure. Any of those, any of those descriptors. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, if you want to. So this is the point where Maria is at. Like, we, you can add as much as you want at this point, and it's just going to make it creamier. I think that's good. Um, the more olive oil you add, the more liquidy it's going to be. Yeah. The harder it is. Uh, to be able to like get a good spoonful and have that spoonful stay together without it spreading out yeah. or whatever you're using. Like so this right now at this point, this is pretty all purpose. You could put this on a pizza and spread it out pretty easily. Mm -hmm. You could put it on a nice piece of sourdough toast with a couple of poached eggs mm -hmm. and it'd be really nice. So the best part about this, you get to taste through several stages. At this point, it's really cheesy. It's got a lot of bright notes from the, from the basil. The walnuts are really nice and crunchy. 
I think we can add a couple pinches of salt to this mm -hmm. if we want. Definitely. But one of the things with pesto, people almost always over salt their pesto. You can add salt to a dish, you can't take it away. Mm -hmm. So always under add salt uh, to the finished product so that you can zhuzh it up with all sorts of other dishes. If you're putting it on something that's gonna have cheese on it, it's gonna be more salty. So but I'm just gonna add. The paste pre-oil was definitely more flavor forward. Once we added the oil, you taste a lot of olive oil right now. So the salt is going to enhance that basil flavor. Yeah. And we don't want to cover up that olive oil taste. It's a great taste because we're using good olive oil. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we do want to sort of lift it a little bit. Taste right there. <laughs> it's like so crunchy. I think this might be the crunchiest batch we've ever made. Good. Crunchy's good. At least for us. Yeah. The thing about pesto too that's so fun is there's so many different iterations of it. Mm -hmm. You can blend it and get it as smooth or as unsmooth as you want. This is like sacrilege for an Italian because it's so crunchy, but like that's the way we like to make it. Mm -hmm. But the person next to us could just put it in the blender for a little bit longer and have that like really general traditional creamy pesto taste. But man, the basil, it's so fragrant. The salt really elevates it and it's four ingredients. So if you've I feel like a lot of us have very overgrown basil plants right now. Um, so this is a great option. The way that we store this is we just put it into a mason jar with a really tight you know, top and it stays for definitely a couple of weeks. But if you make big batches, say you have like a huge basil harvest that you wanna make like an, an epic batch of this, you can easily freeze it in little ice cubes and then take the ice cubes out and throw them in a pan and then like use it throughout the winter and have that like fresh basil taste. You can, always good to uh, minimize how life. much air you're putting into this. Yeah. So if it's in a mason jar, make sure the mason jar is packed full. Um, if it's not packed full, add a little bit extra olive oil to the top. That's what I do. Um, and it won't really change over much. It just sort of acts like sometimes the oil on fresh peanut butter, a similar concept, like it keeps the air from touching everything. Yeah. Um, and when you're freezing it, if you put, if you do the ice cube method, that's totally fine, but Ziploc bag. Um, yeah. you, you don't want any the air in there bag. getting freezer burn on it because it'll really show up in the basil. Mm -hmm. But this is, Something that I've been asked to keep stocked in the house pretty yeah. much at all times, and we just ran out. So Maria's gonna eat half this bowl, and then I'm gonna use for it for breakfast. all sorts of other stuff. So tag us on Instagram if you end up making the pesto, and leave a comment below. Let us know how you guys like to make your pesto because everybody has their own recipe, and there's always room to grow mm -hmm. in with our kitchen skills. So we want to know how you like your pesto too. So bon appetito, plant friends, and until next time, keep, keep blooming, blooming and keep growing. growing. Cheers! Oh man, that's good. Mm. <laughs> so good. I might eat this <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>